Hello students, welcome to Ohm Institute and in this video I am going to discuss about the questions of signal and system that were asked in the recent Genco examination which was conducted on the Sunday 14th of July and uh, you know in this that was the EC branch okay. So we have already discussed the questions of electrical branch okay. So now uh, you know there are five questions of signals and you know all of them are simple ones okay. We will be putting it as simple category you will feel also okay. Uh, so, you know, not much calculative also. So, look into it. The first one is in the basic uh, frequency, the complex frequency S is equal to sigma plus J omega, which gives rise to the complex exponential term. Okay. The complex exponential term in general, which we call it as E power ST. Now, okay, for E0 or infinity, what are the results? Of course, they are somehow talking about DC and DC represents 0. Okay. So, of course, for S equal to 0, it is DC. And then they are separately also asking to see. This is e power st which can be broken as e power sigma plus j omega into t as we all know s is equal to sigma plus j omega which is mentioned also. Okay, so if I take the case of sigma equal to 0, if I take the case of sigma equal to 0, you are going to get the term e power j omega t, okay, which is split into cos omega t plus j sin omega t, sinusoidal term, okay, sinusoidal term. On the other hand, if you put omega 0, okay. If you put the real frequency omega equal to 0, then what is the term you are left with? A real exponential function e power sigma t if the omega is 0. Okay. So, that is e power of sigma t. That is the exponential term for omega equal to 0 and as the frequency 0 corresponding to dc. The correct answer that is matching with all our calculation is the option number c. Okay. Let's go ahead to the next one. Okay. So, uh, for the equation x double dash t uh, plus 3 x dash t plus 2 x t is equal to 5. The solution approaches which of the value for t tending to infinity. t tending to infinity means final value theorem. Now, this is a question which can be solved by mathematics also. Okay, by calculating the CF and PI. That will be little calculative, but that is also one approach. Calculating the complementary function and PI. Or you can solve it by the Laplace transform method and apply the final value theorem. Okay, so what is the Laplace transform for second derivative? S square xs. Okay, plus 3. First derivative Laplace transform s into xs. Okay, plus 2 xt, xt Laplace is xs. Okay, equal to 5. Okay, 5 li and what is the Laplace transform for 1? 1 by s. Okay, so for the signal xt, this xt has some Laplace transform xs. What is that Laplace transform xs? That can be determined from here. Na? Okay, s square plus 3 s plus 2. I am going to shift it on the right side and hence you have 5 upon s. s square plus 3 s plus 2. Okay, and then what is the value of xt for t tending to infinity? for t tending to infinity xt value and that is what is final value theorem and that is written as limit of s tending to 0 s into xs that is limit s tending to 0 s into xs so s into the xs which i have written above okay so s and s will get cancelled here and if the s and s are cancelled okay then you put s tending to 0 what is only left is 5 by 2 okay so what i have applied calculated the Laplace and applied the final value theorem, correct answer is 5 by 2, option number B here. Okay, option number B. Okay, dear, next question. All right. Now, uh, this is also a gate P by Q directly, which they have asked, why and there is a relation between the input and output of a discrete time system given and this particular system is the approximation of high pass filter, band pass filter, low pass filter, band stop filter. Okay, so uh, to get the idea about uh, filtering, we need to go into the frequency domain. So taking the DTFT on all the sides, okay, taking the DTFT, so YN has the DTFT, uh, Y omega equal to, you can also even solve in the Z domain, okay, not a problem. XN has the DTFT, X omega minus 2, XN minus 1, time shift property, XN minus 1 DTFT will be X of omega E power minus j omega and then plus x of n minus 2. So, x of omega e power minus j 2 omega. Now, what is the frequency response of the system? How do we define the frequency response? It is given by the ratio of output to the input y omega by x omega dtft, output dtft upon input dtft. So, you take out x omega common on the right side, divide on the left and you are left with 1 minus e power minus 2 j omega plus e power minus j 2 omega. Okay. So, what I have first obtained is the frequency response of the system. Okay, now based on the nature of the frequency response, I will decide what type of filter it is. Okay, so what is that frequency response? H of omega is 1 minus 2 e power minus j omega plus e power minus j 2 omega. And if you put omega equal to 0 dear, what is the gain at 0 frequency? All e power 0 terms will be 1. And the zero frequency gain is zero. So, definitely it is not low pass. It is not passing the low frequency. Okay. Now, if I go to the high frequency, what is the high frequency in the DT 
filter case it is the omega equal to pi okay so once you calculate the gain at pi okay so 1 minus 2 e power minus j pi plus e power minus j 2 pi and this is 1 minus 2 e power minus j pi okay is minus 1 cos pi minus j sin pi okay e power minus j 2 pi will be plus 1 cos 2 pi minus j sin 2 pi okay so this is minus 2 minus 1 plus 2 so 1 plus 2 plus 1 4 definitely it is passing the high frequency with a higher gain so it is a high pass filter if the high frequency gain was also zero okay neither low nor high so it would be a band pass in that case okay but right now it is a high pass no need to check intermediate frequencies it is justified okay that gain towards high frequency is higher okay so it is the characteristic of the high pass filter it is a characteristic of the high pass filter option number a correct for this let's get ahead well, for the next let's get ready for the next question okay this direct one okay the unilateral z transform unilateral so you know the unilateral which is defined as summation okay of x n z power minus n okay the formula of z transform is same from the limit 0 to infinity basically for the analysis of causal signals and causal systems causal systems on to which you apply causal inputs okay right Unilateral Z-transform is only defined for those where the signal is defined from 0 to infinity. Okay, it starts anywhere between 0 to infinity. It should not exist on left. That means causality. Option number C. That's the direct thing. Okay, similarly, unilateral Laplace transform is also defined for causal continuous time systems with the causal input. Okay, tenth one. Okay, classification of the systems. Okay, match the following. Okay, just match the following okay so first of all which of the systems are linear okay so they have not made this question really appropriate because there are multiple systems which can be linear okay but yeah you can still match the option see what are the systems which are linear now okay yn is x square and this is quadratic is non-linear but yn is x power minus n okay the relation with input and output is x power 1 the time folding does not affect the linearity of system okay you can watch my earlier videos i'm not deriving it right now similarly y here is the function of x power 1 Okay, changes in the time argument like you make it as n square n cube that does not affect the linearity. Okay, third and fourth are linear and not only third and fourth. Okay, the, this one also if you open now yn. Okay, is summation minus infinity to infinity of xk. Okay, some minus infinity to infinity of xk additivity, you know, in discrete addition or in the continuous integral, they are linear operator. Okay, so if I talk about a, okay, 1, 3 and 4 actually all will match here. Actually all is going to match up here all is going to match up here okay then b non-linear of course with non-linear there is only one part okay x square square that is non-linear okay relation c causal okay where the output depends on the present or past okay present or past so see, definitely this is going to be non-causal because summation minus infinity to infinity so when you expand this na, summation runs from minus infinity then but there will be uh, terms like x of n plus 1 in between minus infinity to infinity x of n will be there okay then x of n plus 1 okay i am starting from bottom so let me write this as n minus 1 sorry okay so n minus 1 n n plus 1 all these terms will be there till infinity okay so definitely this part is there that means future values are there so definitely this is non-causal it has present past and future everything okay yn is x square and the output depends only on the present okay the so second one is causal okay second one the, uh, even the second one comes in the causal case okay okay for the second one comes in the causal case now yn is x of minus n okay that also will not be causal that also will not be causal why see it is not causal because it is not causal because when you take negative time suppose minus one then here it becomes x plus one to calculate output uh, at minus one you need the value of the input at plus one that is future that is future okay so it is non-causal okay and yn is x of n square this is also non-causal suppose if you put 2 okay so output at time equal to 2 is the value of the input at time 4 2 square is 4 so again future is there okay again future is there okay so only 2 is causal and option uh, and the d is non-causal so non-causal means 1 is also non-causal 3 is non-causal and 4 is non-causal okay so b with 2 c with 3 i think uh, this is a question which uh, you know should have been challenged by uh, uh, you know the students although the challenge window is uh, over no not open now okay but yeah it was open for two days uh, uh, up to the 17th of july okay because a1 we can say b2 c2 okay c3 c and d4 okay so definitely okay and b2 is here c ke saath 1 bhi nahi aayega see maybe there is a typo error here if it is summation minus infinity to n 
summation minus infinity to n, then it be, becomes causal. Otherwise, it is non-causal. So, none of the option will match here. Okay, none of the option will match here. Okay, so B, B is 2, that is confirmed. Okay, B is 2, that is confirmed. Okay, A ke saath 4 aega, that is also okay. Okay, D can have third and fourth bowls also. Okay, but C, only 2, only 2 is the causal one. Only 2 is the causal one. Yeah, sure. Okay, it is sure that none of them will match actually. None of them will actually match. I think, uh, you know, maybe officially uh, they are trying to give the answer as D, but that is not correct. Okay, C3. Okay, or maybe 1, C1. Okay, any one of them is the official answer given by them, but C1, 1 is non-causal. It will only be causal if it is minus infinity to n. If it is minus infinity to n. Okay, but minus infinity to infinity means all the values of input are there, present, past, future. So, that is also not causal. So, only causal option is 2. So, none of the option matches as per the given uh, things here. Okay, dear, as per the given things here. Alright, so as I told you, five questions are there. Mostly all are simple only. This is simple. None of the option matches. That is a different case. Okay, uh, this is a direct one. Uh, this is a regular question on filter and it's actually gate PYQ also. Straight direct gate PYQ. Copied one. This is also actually, I forgot to mention a gate PYQ only. But simple one on final value theorem. Okay, and first one is just a very simple, you know, understanding of the frequency. Nothing more. Okay, so all questions are mostly simple level. Okay, so these are the five questions I told you. Uh, they are from the signal sun system. Bye bye. And then, uh, you know, uh, you will get, I'll upload more videos on like, you know, the questions of control and digital and etc. Okay, dear.